15 minutes till I thought I had time to get here, but then we all done it. Of course, the traffic lights and then the traffic and then people Life. driving slow, so okay. <laughs> I know that one, right? So I just I guess I gotta adjust my time to be here a little bit early, but I do sincerely apologize because I hate being late and my wife knows Amen. that. I hate being on time. I usually like to be here 15 minutes prior, but I had some other things going on this morning too. So with that being said, I just want to uh, bow our heads in prayer just for a brief moment. And, uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. And Lord God, I just thank you, O God, for this opportunity, O God, to be used as a vessel unto you, to bring honor and glory unto your name, to deliver a message and a lesson today, O God, to impart in somebody today, O God, which you have shown me. Lord God, let it be an awesome learning experience, O God. We pray, O God, that the word that's taught today, O Lord, let it speak, let it be, let it be taught with deliverance, O God, let it be taught with clarity, let it be taught with understanding, O God. And let it be something that the people can hold on to throughout the rest of the week. Or let it grab a hold of them in such a way they won't ever forget it. So, Lord God, right now I ask you to anoint me now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to speak your word. Let not I speak, but let the Holy Spirit speak through me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, t this is my first time, so um, I was kind of jittery. This is the first time I've been jittery. But I saw the awesome teachers that we had here before when I was coming, so just sitting down. So now I'm kind of like, okay, now you're in the spotlight, so now I have to. But I did get a little inspiration this morning, so uh, before I got out here, and I feel like it's going to be all right. Amen. Okay. Uh, if you would please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Then we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. And then we're going to go to Matthew 25 and 13. And we all know this is this lesson is based as uh, living in the last days. Amen. Say amen. 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 Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is, I, I, I like the class participation. I don't like to be the always one, always the one talking. So, uh, if I could have somebody read First Thessalonians chapter five, verses one through six. But of the times amen. and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Amen. 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 Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses one to nine. Can someone get that? Two, one to nine. Yes, please. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, Shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And know ye now what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who, know, who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
even him whose coming is after the work, working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. I'll read verse 10 too. And with all deceivability of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Okay. And I'll read Matthew 25, verse 13. And it reads, Therefore keep watch, because you, don't know, you do not know the day or the hour. Uh, when I was doing this Sunday school lesson, I said, Well, we've been over eschatology quite a bit. So what, we, what do we really need to do to talk about concerning the last days? Mm -hmm. I think we need to really focus on preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparation is the biggest key. And the only thing about God I understand is that He doesn't really concern about our start. What's more, he's, what, more, what He's more concerned about is our finish. And that we finish this race according to His will mm -hmm. and His way. Mm -hmm. Not according to our way. Not taking any shortcuts, not deviating to what we think is right or what we think how it should be done, but according to God's instructions. And that's why He gave us the Word. That's why He gave us this living Word. Okay? And this is the instructions that we have. These are the only instructions. And there is only one way to get to that, that, to that prize possession, that crown of glory, that eternal life, and that's through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether anybody, uh, whether, and we know there's many denominations out there, whether they, uh, whether they believe it all or not, and, and the doctrines are so different, but this right here, if you stick to this right here, you're going, you're going to get it. You're going to get in, okay? Amen. If you stick right and you live it, and it's in a part of you, and it's inside of you, you internalize this message, you start living this in your life on a daily basis, you will get there. Amen. God is faithful on His promises. And now, when we look at all the tests and trials that we're going, going through right now, just to get to this place we're going to, mm -hmm. it can be summed up in three words. I always look at this every time I go through a test, trial. You know, sometimes trials last longer than others. All, and a lot of times we're in our trials longer because of us, not because of what God is trying to do. It's because of what we're not doing. That's why we're going round and round in a circle. That's why we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting different results. If you do that, you're going to get the same result every time. So you got to break out of those, you got to break those, uh, you got to break that cycle. That's right. So when we talk about a test, a test is, how many of y'all like to take tests? I don't see no hands raised. I'll tell you right now, I don't mind taking a test. You know, we as believers, we should not be afraid to take a test. You want to know why? Because it's going to let you know where you at and how much you know. And many of us are fearful about taking a test. A test will let you know just exactly where you are. And especially in the spiritual walk with Christ and your Holy Ghost, that's where the rubber meets the road right there. You know, too many of us have been sitting at the church getting a message and having, relying on the pastor or the teachers to teach us, but we're not even learning ourselves. This hasn't even internalized in ourselves. We're so heavy at relying upon them to teach us, we don't even pick up the Bible at home to study it for ourselves, to study show ourselves approved. But how is it that you're going to, if you receive this knowledge, you're sitting in the household of God, getting this every Sunday, wouldn't it be a shame just to be sitting here every Sunday didn't learn nothing, didn't grow, for what? To get the same reward for those who don't even believe in Christ and going straight to hell. That would be a dying shame. Amen. It would be. Amen. It's a waste of time. Amen. God didn't even make it hard for us. He gave us the answers. Here's the book right here. You know when you go to school, right, they give you the textbook. They say, they give you a curriculum. Right? Mm -hmm. You study it and say, if you study this right here, you study specific and, and even some teachers, they will even give you a review that's right. on the test to let you know what's on the test. With the answers, they say, if you look at, if you look at the book and you read it and you take it down, guess what? The answers are already there. There is no reason for anybody to fail. That's what they say. That's what they say. But you know how many people fail? <laughs> A lot of people fail. We don't need to be fearful of these last days. We don't need to fail anything. Because God has already given the answers to every situation, every circumstance, every trial that we will ever go through. Everything. There is nothing. He's not going to do any more. 
He sent his son Jesus down across for us, and he died. He, he rose up from the dead with all power in his hand, the power of the resurrection, and he sent his comforter down. He gave us his word. He sent the Holy Spirit. If you believe in him and you was baptized in the name of Jesus and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are walking in power. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's no reason none of this stuff should take you by surprise. Not one bit of it. If it does, there's a problem. That means either your relationship ain't right with God, which most of the time that is, or you're not in this here every day studying. The decisions you have to make in life concerning these last days is all based on what it says in here. That's where all the answers are. All you got to do is put them to practice. And I believe God is looking more for people to practice what they preach instead of talking about it. I like that. Practice what you preach. Don't just sit there and say, well, I believe God. Let your lifestyle reflect what you believe in. And that's the problem today. We don't have uh, many believers' lifestyle don't reflect what they talk about. Amen. And you wonder why we aren't winning. We're not winning over people in society because we're not reflecting Christ likenesses, and we don't even have the knowledge. You wonder why the Muslims are the third largest religion in the world today, even in the United States, because they and they're growing. They're growing more than Christian. They're growing more than the Christian church is. I, and I'm not. I'm not giving. I'm not giving them credit. But I will tell you this, the reason why they grow because they're disciplined. Yeah. Yes. So that's it. They know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they walk with a sense of purpose. We as a body of Christ, as believers, we have the truth. We should be walking like that. Mm -hmm. But many of us not walking like that. Mm -hmm. So we already have the answers to the test. We just got to walk it out, and we got to let people, we are to be distinguished from this world because we are foreigners in this land. We don't even belong here. Once you gave your life to Christ, that was it. You became a new creature. You don't even belong in this world system. So now we have to retrain our thoughts, retrain our thinking, retrain our lifestyle to fit the kingdom of God. Not to fit, not to intermingle or mix the two, but to fit the kingdom of God, and that's it. So that's a test. So every test. He gives the answer to the test, so we know the answer to the test. Alright? So there's no reason why we can't, we can't fulfill what God wants us to do. He's already given us that ability. Second of all, it's a trust. Whenever we go through something, you're either going to trust yourself, or you're going to trust God. That's the only two options, really. When you think about it. There's no alternative. You're either going to go to heaven, or you're either going to go to hell. There's no other options. I know it does seem unfair, but guess what? Life is very unfair, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> there is no ifs, ands, ands. And, and I, for some reason, what blows me away, there's so many people, they'll sit there and look for ways, the easy way out. Let me tell you something. There is no easy way out. The only easy way out is the road to hell. That's the one that's the easy way out. He says, broad and wide is the road that leads to destruction. Many people are, but straight and narrow is the road that leads to life, which very few people find. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. And when we look at church growth today, most of our church growth is not vertical. It's horizontal. And it's lateral. When people are going from church to church, that is not church growth. We can boost our ego up and say it is, but it isn't. Okay? Most people leave church because they don't like that church. I, I'm not getting it no I'm not getting nothing there no more. So I got to go to another church. Isn't that the truth? How many of y'all came from another church that was here? Had to leave another church because you wasn't getting what you was getting. So then you had to go somewhere else to take you to another level. Right? That's just the way it is. Our greatest conversions are happening over in the 1040 window. You know what the 1040 window is, right? That's where the, uh, that's over in the, uh, the Middle East and the Asian countries.